Hey guys, welcome to my very first YouTube video. Um, today I'm gonna show you how to make Lenny's mini strawberry rhubarb hand pies. So this is not a cooking show, so um, you can look up your own recipes for a strawberry rhubarb pie, or if there's maybe one that you already have that you love. Um, I'm basically just gonna show you my methods on how to make it really tiny. Um, something that's really important to do with your store-bought pie crust is to uh, let it sit out on the counter until it's warm. It's just a lot easier to work with that way. And then um, maybe you grow some rhubarb outside or have time to go pick it up at the grocery store or, you know, grows at your grandma's house or something. You're going to want to get some rhubarb. And then just... We're making tiny hand pies, so we, we really need to just make it as small as we can. It'll make it so much easier when we're, we're filling the little hand pies. So I'm sitting at my table, and this is actually not very easy, so bear with me here. Clearly, for tiny hand pies, we don't need that much material. So this is probably plenty. We'll just stick it in our little saucepan. And then uh, same goes for some strawberries. My guess is we need one, maybe two. You know, you can do this however you want. Again, I try to keep everything as close to the authentic recipe as possible, but it's hard to do that with tiny food. So we'll plop that in. I really ought to have gotten myself a towel, but oh well, I guess that's what pants are for. So in the pot, we got our strawberry and our tiny chopped rhubarb. We need a little cornstarch. I really want this to be gelled up a lot. It's going to make my life easier when I go to add it to the pie crust. So I put in, hmm, I don't know, a couple teaspoons of cornstarch and then we're going to add about eh, a tablespoon or so of sugar. And then uh, I'm going to take it over to my stove because I don't have my induction burner for my tabletop yet, but that will be coming. So bear with me, I'll be back. One more thing, if you have just happened upon this here on the YouTube, um, we have our main platform on Instagram and that would be at who's a good lizard. So go ahead and go give us a follow over there where I will be sharing Lenny's photos and reels of this exact project. Um, here on YouTube, this is just going to be more of the, the technical side of things. So um, as everybody knows, go ahead and give us a follow on here. What do they say? Smash that like button or hit subscribe or something silly like that. Um, anyways, do what you want, but um, I'll be here making videos as, as much as possible. All right, I'm back. So. While I was cooking the strawberry rhubarb puree, um, I added a little bit of lemon juice to it. It just wasn't quite the consistency that I was looking for. What I really wanted was this very gelatinous, thick mess here because, you know, we gotta make this mini. Anyway, hopefully this pie crust is ready to go here. And you're totally welcome to make your pie crust from scratch. Uh, if you want to, I just like to cheat sometimes. So now we're just going to cut our pie crust into little rectangles. What you're going to want to do is keep the edge pretty wide. We're, we're going for like a pop tart shape, if that makes sense any sense so keep keep it wider than you want your finish finished project like product pardon me um because we're gonna use a special little tool to give it the shape that we're really looking for so 
I've got a couple strips here. This one's got pretty decent edges, but let's just go ahead and clean them up because we can. And then, I really like this one more. This one was a little bit more of the width that I was looking for. So let's say we can make about, eh, hopefully four. We only need a couple. This will be good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we'll see how many. It looks like we're only going to get like three out of this. We might actually want to unroll this again and make a couple more just in case we have some screw ups. Every time I do one of these little food projects with, with Lenny, it's kind of a learning curve. It's different every time. There's no specific set of rules, which adds to the creativity factor. So, which makes it kind of fun. So now we're gonna scoop up just a little bit of our puree and plop it in the middle here. Oh, you know what? We'll use this strawberry. I try to use as much of the stuff I already have on hand. I should have gotten some water, but I don't feel like going back to the kitchen because we need to seal these edges. So you can just use the end of the strawberry to kind of wet it down. Um, it has plenty of moisture without me having to get back up. So, uh, yeah, now we'll just take our lid and press that down to seal it. And then I got this little tool. It's kind of fun. I think it's for ravioli or whatever, but today it's going to be for hand pies. See, that works great so much better than me trying to cut it with a knife like I have in the past making this fun little edge on it. So we have one, one tiny little pie and we'll be doing more to it shortly, but I just wanna get these other ones built and you know you can just decide how many you want to make um, if you're having like a tiny food party or a lizard photo shoot it is all oops I forgot to wet down the edges you're gonna want to do that otherwise it just doesn't just doesn't quite seal very well without that added moisture you could also like lick it if you wanted to, if you were, you know, going to be gross and not serve these to anybody else. Uh, totally not disgusting. Anyway, so we'll just cut the edges off of this one again. This tool is working great for this project. I'm very happy to have it. I'm sure it has a technical name, but we don't care about that. All right. You know, honestly, and this is what I mean, it's always a learning curve with each one of these recipes. We could even make this smaller. This is actually pretty large for a Lenny item. So I'm actually not loving the size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right down the middle. And now I feel like I'm a lot happier with this size. So everything in Lenny's kitchen is one sixth scale which is slightly larger than dollhouse and I really try and keep the food right around there this one's not this one's gonna be fine but this one it doesn't look like it sealed well so we'll just hide that one in our future photography coming up this stuff's getting really sticky as it cools All right, and I think honestly, after this, I mean, six is probably plenty uh, for what I'm after today. I do keep the scraps. Um, oftentimes, I will turn these 
tiny foods into after school snacks for my daughters or I'll just go ahead and take the waste and turn it into a couple full sized ones for them to enjoy or, you know, whomever. But I really try not to, to waste too much with, you know, there's enough of that in the world. We don't need to do that with Lenny stuff. Um, another thing, if anybody ever has any ideas, sometimes, you know, it's always kind of, that's the hard part is coming up with a fresh new idea every single day. Um, I do try to post new content as much as possible on Instagram. So if there is something that you would love to see done mini, and obviously this is a new account, so I don't have a lot of stuff up yet. Uh, please go to Instagram and uh, shoot me a direct message. I check everything. I am the only person that runs that account. So uh, I'm always on there, it seems like. And um, I'll try to respond as, as fast as possible and, and put it on my list. I have a very long list of ideas and I use a national day calendar. Um, it's actually strawberry rhubarb pie day today, but... Uh, we're making hand pies because it just seemed like more fun. And I wanted to use this fun tool that I just got. So let's hope these seal. I made this pretty chunky in the middle. So we'll see. It might bleed out a little bit when we go to bake it, but uh, who cares? And um, we need to let it breathe once it gets in the oven. So I got to go grab a fork. Okay, so I was a little bit weirded out by the size of the pokey things on my forks. So we're gonna use a fondue skewery thing. Um, obviously it's very, very technical around here using all the, the big words. I really don't like how flat that was on that corner. Okay, so with all pies, you have to give it vents so that the steam can release so it doesn't just poof up like a like a big pillow so these little holes will keep it venting properly and here maybe you can see it see the little tiny little holes i made there all right so we'll just go ahead and i have a baking sheet parchment paper and oil and we'll just chuck them on there i'll show you guys that in a minute so i'm just going to go ahead and poke holes in all of these. Ooh, this one's, this one's got a funny shape. Whatever. Not all of them turn out. So we'll go and pick the ones that, that we like the best after they cook for a little while. Um, if you are going to use store-bought pie crust, like I do, uh, Follow the directions that are on the packaging for that brand. I have found it's inconsistent across brands. So we have six little tiny hand pies. Um, just because I always get nervous that something is going to be a complete failure, I'll just use these little extra guys that I have. So they're kind of oddly shaped, but whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and make that original size and not make it smaller, just in case. And then that way we have a backup plan. I do like having backup plans. Because you never know. Stuff goes wrong. And this is time consuming, so we got to make the most of our time. Though compared to some of Lenny's food projects, this is this is less time consuming. 
and a little easier since I didn't make the crust. Uh, this tool, I'm telling you, this is this is great. This is perfect for this project. All right, so we'll space these ones a little bit farther apart since it's a larger hand pie. And now I feel more confident plopping these in the oven. All right. Um, one more thing that I'm thinking we should do with these little guys is probably do an egg wash just because I really want that golden typical pie crust look on these. Um, since I'm not going to do a glaze, I guess I could do like a frosting. Maybe we could do that. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll give it a light egg wash and then we'll mix up a little royal icing kind of frosting something. Just powdered sugar and milk, oat milk probably. Uh, make a little drizzle. That'll uh, make it look more bakery fresh. So I'm gonna go grab an egg and my pastry brush and um, get that egg wash going. All right, so egg wash. I put a little tiny bit of water in here. Here's an egg. Crack it. Um, we'll use our fondue thingy. You know, I have this fondue pot here at home. I've had it for, I don't know, years. It's really cool, actually. It's like cast iron and stuff. I have never used it. But uh, these things come in handy all the time, so. That's cool. Anyway, um, I think my pastry brush is probably way too big for what we're gonna do here, but we can try it on these, these larger guys. So we don't need much. Everything is very minimal with, with these projects. So we'll just brush it all over. Oh, and also while I was in the kitchen, I had preheated my oven because that takes a little while. I did actually order a countertop convection oven um, this morning, and thanks to speedy delivery, it should be here tomorrow, and that's gonna make things a lot easier to just do right here at my table where I do everything. Um, less back and forth, as long as you know I don't forget tools and don't change my mind a thousand times in the middle the middle of the project because I never really know what I'm doing when I get into this. Uh, sometimes I go to the store and you know I get what I get and then I completely change my direction with it once I get back home. So all these are pretty pretty well coated. Um, like anything pastry wise I love a little sugar on top. Um, sometimes it shows up in photography, sometimes it doesn't, but it just looks good to me and it's important that I enjoy it too because I spend an astronomical amount of time making these things. So that's that. We have several little tiny hand pies and they're awfully cute. I mean, that's one good thing about this, uh, that, or what I love is that everything is, is cute and happy and it's, it's totally, it's just fun. Um, it's kind of hard to be pissed off when you're making tiny pastries. Uh, Lenny's actually chilling in the window watching me right now here. I'll show you guys. So while I'm making the tiny food, Lenny is, over there in the window, Whoop, there goes the phone, staring at the neighbors, being creepy. Hold on, I probably just screwed up all of that, but whatever, we don't really care. Good enough, maybe. Tilt, tilt, tilt. Okay, so I'm gonna go cook these. Set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes starting now.
Anyway, so tiny hand pies are in the oven. Uh, I just set my timer for 10 minutes. Um, I'll probably get nervous and go check on them sooner than that. But I just realized I'm out of powdered sugar. So I have this leftover icing sugar, which is pretty much exactly the same thing. I think this was from like a gingerbread house or something. So whatevs. Um, you don't need much. You just need like, I don't know, I'm going to do like a big spoonful. Obviously, I don't really like to measure things. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. Um, so we got a little icing sugar in our little bowl. And then uh, I don't really drink milk. So you can use any milk. Um, I'm just using oat milk because that's what I got. And you just need just a very little. And we'll just use our handy dandy fondue fork thing again because see how this consistency is I just added like a dribble of milk and if you screw up and you add too much milk just add more sugar until you get I do this a lot so I'm pretty good at it um you want this kind of like warm toothpaste consistency uh that's going to be perfect for for your frosting it'll drizzle you're going to drizzle it off the fondue fork or a regular fork and just kind of zizzle zazzle it over the tops of your pastries once they come out of the oven and cool a bit so now that my frosting's done and my stuff's in the oven I'm gonna clean up some of the mess that I've made here because there's like egg and things and um, I'll be back with the uh, the baked goods We're just here patiently waiting. Um, in the meantime, while we wait, uh, just as a reminder, all of this tiny food, though edible, it is for human consumption and should never be fed to your bearded dragon, nor should you pose your bearded dragon with food if they are food motivated. Uh, Lenny is not food motivated. He's actually kind of a pain to get to eat um, daily. Uh, he prefers to be hand fed and he's very particular with his diet. Um, the reason why you don't ever see Fievel or Grandpa posing with food um, is because they would eat it and or taste it. And um, oftentimes we can't have that because it's not bearded dragon safe. So uh, I just want to throw that out there that um, to if you're gonna pose your any pet really with um, with mini food or any kind of food for that matter, um, don't unless you know they are a professional like like Lenny. He's he's been doing this for a long time, and I know his personality very well, and I know his triggers, I know what not to do and what is okay to do. So that being said. Um, yeah, be very careful because they are, they're precious. Okay, out of the oven. So as you can see, they cooked. Uh, I have them over here on a cooling rack because it's hot. Um, anyway, a, a lot of this is, is luck. Um, going into it, you never really know if it's, it's going to totally turn out. I've actually only made Pop-Tarts. I think one other time and I've done some other varieties of hand pies but it wasn't exactly like this so this is kind of a, another another guess that that worked out I did when I was over at the oven um, take my creme brulee torch to one to see if I could make it toast up a little bit faster but I don't love the color that came out on that one so we're gonna have to make sure that we really call it, cover this one in frosting to hide our mistakes um, the larger pies actually, oh, these are warm. Um, I really love the golden that we got around on the edges there. Those look really good. So I think what we'll do is we'll use these also and we'll just have a variety of sizes. Maybe these will go up onto the cake plate um, for a little bit of a size contrast. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, it's, it's different every time and you really just kind of have to roll with it because uh, there are no rules. Um, but I like that. So frosting things is really messy. Um, I don't really love messy stuff. So we are going to do that here on our cutting board. 
Uh, these little things are, are kind of hot, so we do need to let them cool a bit. Otherwise, our icing here, and I can show you what I'm doing over here. Uh, I've got a, a cooling rack, so um, these can just be on here for a little while. Uh, ugly one and I'll go stick this back in the kitchen. So if we don't let these cool enough, then the frosting is just gonna run right off of them and make a big mess. I like to do this usually over a cookie sheet, but I don't really feel like going and getting an additional cookie sheet. The one that I was using was too small for this cooling rack, so we're just gonna wing it here on the cutting board. And they're still pretty warm, so we'll just sit here and think about something that we can talk about. Um, this is going to be fun for me to get used to talking to myself. Uh, it is a kind of an odd thing, unless you have done YouTube videos before, I guess you'd never really know how weird it is until you're doing it. Uh, I'm going to go get an additional fondue fork because this one is all gummed up. I've also found that my kitchen light being off makes for better lighting in here. So that's fun. There we go. Now you guys can see. So now they're still pretty freaking hot. So I guess we're still waiting. And we can always try one. We can try it on the ugly one. And drizzle gently with our fondue fork. Yeah, I think the warmth of the pastry itself is liquefying our sugar here. But it's all about trial and error and we'll see how this one looks when it dries so I'm gonna go hop on my computer really quick and let these things cool I have a hard time being patient if I'm just staring at them and uh, I'll come back okay here we are um, I think that these are cool enough so we're just gonna drizzle our frosting haphazardly again no rules nobody cares that much when we're working with mini items this is looking fantastic can't wait to show you the final product on Lenny's Insta Anyway, so there we have it. We have several varieties of different sized mini hand pies filled with a strawberry rhubarb puree. And as you can see, there's a little bit coming out the side, but that just shows you that that's legit. This is a legit itty bitty, teeny tiny, Strawberry rhubarb ham pie. Um, I wasn't joking when I said I make all this food from scratch here in my house for fun. And uh, hope to see you over on Instagram. Please subscribe because uh, that'll make me feel cool. And um, like this and share it because I would love to do more of these. I think that it's time to get some of these tips and tricks out there. Uh, they can be applied to larger versions. Um, but I do specialize in tiny. So hope to see you back here again. Thanks for watching.